I made a big bet on a game. It was Yom Kippur, okay? I was at my friend's house, I'm watching the game, and um, I really needed to win this bet. What is this, the World Series? No, it was just a college football game. Oh. But I bet a lot of money on it, and I really wanted to win. In the real world, like I was in like, having more money is better than having less money. So we're just playing your construct, right? And so we're watching the game, and I bet that there wasn't gonna be more than 34 and a half points scored in the second half, okay, which is a lot of points, but these teams were scoring a lot So that's why it was so high. Anyways, with like four minutes to go in the game. They'd only scored like six points I mean, I was a sure winner like there was like usually you're betting It's usually very close because they make the line very close. It could go either way But sometimes you just win like right away. This was like a sure winner And this was just as Yom Kippur was coming to an end So I said to my friend who was fasting I said, even though he, well, he's not really from, but, you know, whatever, he, he fasts on Yom Kippur. So I said, I'll go to the, the, the store and get you a sandwich because Yom Kippur's over. I don't need to watch this because there's no way I can lose this game, right? Usually I would never walk away from such a big game that I absolutely needed to win, right? So I decide to go to the store and get him the sandwich. So I go get him the sandwich. We come back, we're watching the game, we're eating the sandwiches. All of a sudden, a touchdown, another onside kick, another touchdown, another touchdown. A zillion touchdowns in like two minutes in the last game. But wait, I'm still winning by half a point. Even after all these crazy touchdowns. That's how far ahead I was. I was still winning. So now there's like five seconds left in the game. And it's become a lot more tense because all of a sudden it's like getting a little nervous, right? One team has the ball at like the 45-yard line or half the field, like far, right? There's one play left. They're going to just called the Hail Mary. You know what the Hail Mary is, right? They call it the Hail Mary because it only has a prayer of working, right? So they run down the field. They throw the ball up in the air. Guy jumps up in the air. This this game was happening at USC. In a, yeah, USC is like a big football school. It's 100,000 people at the game, right? In the LA Coliseum. Berkovici sets. Loads up. Heaving one deep. And it is caught! The guy jumps in the air for Arizona State, catches the ball, falls in the end zone, touchdown. Arizona State wins the game. I lose my bet. The entire stadium is just silent, right? They went from for sure winning to losing this game. I lost the bet. We're just stunned. Mike Berkovici in his second career start. 25 miles from his hometown completes it to Jalen Strong for a play that will go down in Arizona State history as one of the greatest ever run by the Sun Devils. Unbelievable. This young man, what a tribute to this guy. He's right. I, we just cannot believe what just happened, right? I was like, wow, this is unbelievable, right? And on Yom Kippur, right? So I started calling it the Yom Kippur <coughs> Massacre. Yeah. So, so now, fast forward two weeks. This is where it gets funny, right? So two weeks later, my friend, who doesn't know anything about college football, he sends me an email of a profile of a college football player. Now let me tell you, he's never before in his life sent me a profile of a college football. He'll probably never, ever send me one ever again. But he sends me a profile of a college football player two weeks after this happens. I said, why are you sending me college football players? He goes, oh, I'm at the coffee shop. I used to sit at the coffee shop all the time in Beverly Hills. I met this guy. This is his grandson, plays college football. I thought you might know him because you know, you've been on all the college football games. Maybe you'll know this guy. He's a quarterback for Arizona State. I go, do you know who that is? He goes, no. I go, that's the guy who threw the Yom Kippur Massacre Pass. He goes, what? He, I go, yeah, that's the guy. Of all the college football players, you sent me the guy who threw the Yom Kippur Massacre Pass. And because you met his grandfather, at the, of all the people that you could meet, you meet this guy. So already, 
That's a little crazy, right? Now here's where it gets really good. So I go, so a week later he goes, Ruben's here. You gotta come over right away. Ruben's here again. The grandfather, you gotta talk to Ruben because he, he thinks it's hysterical that I lost this game when it was like impossible for me to lose, right? So I go there, I run over there. I say, oh, hey, Ruben, how you doing? Oh, yeah, grandson moves. Football, D did you see the game against USC? You were probably at the stadium that day when they threw the Hail Mary. He goes, you mean the Holy Moly? He's, he's this old Romanian guy. He doesn't know how to say Hail Mary. He calls it the Holy Moly. I said, yeah, the Holy Moly. I go, were you at the game for your grandson? He goes, no, no, it was Yom Kippur. They're Jewish. I go, what? He goes, yeah, it was Yom Kippur. I go... You're Jewish, he goes. Yeah, oh yeah, I'm Jewish. I'm like, oh, your 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 son's uh, wife, she's Jewish. Oh, yeah, of course she's Jewish. Oh, so your grandson's Jewish. Oh yeah, of course he's Jewish. Now, by the way, I don't know what you know about college football, but I can tell you, if you took all the college football quarterbacks in the history of the last fifty years, maybe there's five, maybe there's three. I don't even know. There's not a lot. Okay, this guy who threw the Yom Kippur massacre was not only the guy that this guy meet the grandfather, but he's Jewish on Yom Kippur. It was just like, you gotta be kidding me, seriously? Now that was just, like, I was like, wow. This just proves the unreality of this whole entire thing. This is the biggest movie of all time. I mean, to me, this was like a glitch in the Matrix. You know, you know how like in the movie The Matrix, they like see the cat and they go, by the way, if you see the cat, that's a glitch in the Matrix. I was like, this is a glitch in the, in the, in the truth of what's really going on here because you couldn't write a more ridiculous story right it's like the same thing i went and i got this apartment in hoboken i didn't even pay attention i was just like oh okay it looks like a good deal these people want well, well, i'll get roommates these are good people oh fine I'll take the apartment i noticed afterwards the address is 613. this whole thing it's all interweaved you know this is no joke it's all a great fun story so he thought you'd like that. Did you like that story? And you can use the story if you want. And you know, you're going to take it a whole nother you know, way. No, much more about football than I ever known before. <clears throat> How do you take it? I take it as it's an unbelievable glitch in the. It's like winking at me. It's like, don't worry, this is all just perfect. This is so crazy <laughs> that it that it makes sense <laughs> it cannot possibly be a mistake you know what i mean like it's so outlandish that like the coincidence of that there's no coincidences this is back to what i originally say it's all perfect there's no mistakes here so much so that they create this whole story of the yom kippur massacre passes thrown by a jewish guy that we happen to meet the grandfather and it's like so crazy Two weeks after. Did you ever get to meet him? We never met the, we never got to meet the grandson, no. When you no. do, will you hit him? <laughs> no, it doesn't matter. It, was, that was, it wouldn't it, matter, it, hit it him. No, it wasn't, exactly, it wouldn't matter. I, no, I, it was just, that was just unbelievable. He, this guy actually, he was going, last year he was going, the year he, he did that, it was, he was a junior. And then the following year, he was a senior, which was last year, and he was he had a chance to be like one of the top guys and be in the pros and make millions of dollars and everything. He had a terrible year, and it didn't work out for him, which was a shame, but maybe not. Maybe he has a different story coming to him.